What's up everybody, Mario here from Neko Prince, and today I have something very special for all of you. I was having too many issues with my converted Epson Workforce 7720, so I decided I'm going to upgrade. No, I, I really needed to upgrade. It just wasn't printing right. I was getting P2 wheels on everything. I would change the paper and I would get P2 wheels on certain designs, then I would change the paper to a different brand and I would get P2 wheels on different designs that I wouldn't with the other paper. It was just a mess and I just, I, I got tired of it. So I decided, you know what, maybe it's time I need to upgrade to a dedicated sublimation printer. And here we are. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox it, set it up, install the necessary software, and let's do a test print. Let's go. plugged in now let's see what we're working with all right so it's powered on and then here we have a message saying set the incorrectly what we're gonna do is this little flap on the side just go ahead and open that and that's where our ink is gonna go if you look inside it'll tell you the order that the inks go in our inks I went ahead and got the standard kit if they had the extended cartridges available I would have gotten that one but I didn't see that uh, I was not gonna get the starter cartridges because I print all the time so Standard it is. And that's it. So we're going to have here our M for magenta, K for black, Y for yellow, and C for cyan. Start with the black. It has a little guide here on the top and on the bottom. And here you're going to stick it where these little lines fit into the middle. So it says, please wait. Loading ink first time. Wait and do not touch the machine for seven minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the Sawgrass Ink website. Then we're going to go to Creative Studio. Let's go ahead and sign up for this. So we're going to create an account. And then after that, we're going to go to Get Started and Print Manager. Once we're there, I have Windows. So I'm going to download for Windows. Let's go ahead and start the installation. Click yes and install. Would you like to install this device software? Install. And finish. That's it. That was quick and easy. Agree. Nobody ever reads that. I probably just sold my soul, but whatever. And let's sign in. Let me see if my Sawgrass account works. Yep, so your Sawgrass account works. Printer model, we have the Sawgrass SG-1000 ink. We're using the Sublijet Ultra HD. At least I'm assuming that's what UHD stands for. Yep, that's what it is. Next. All right, now we're going to install a print driver. Click install. Do you want to install this? Yes. Again, would you like to install this device software? Install, yes. Next. How are we going to connect it? Let's connect it through Wi-Fi. Next. All right, so power on the printer. Connect to Wi-Fi, add printer. Let's go ahead and enable Wi-Fi on the printer. Here at the printer, it shows me the ink levels, so it looks like it successfully installed the ink cartridges. So let's look for the Wi-Fi. So we are going to go ahead and hit the menu button. Let's see what they have. There's system settings, interface settings. There we go. All right, interface settings, wireless LAN. Wireless LAN, easy setup. SSID auto search. That means it's just going to look for your Wi-Fi name. Please select wireless LAN or LAN type. All right, you know what? Let's make it easier. Let's do the push button method. So click push button method. All right, let's go ahead and get the router ready first. So on the router, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna hit this little button and that's gonna start the easy pair. All right, so once we're back at the printer, let's hit start. 
Oh wait, all right, now I see what I gotta do. I actually have to activate the Wi-Fi. All right, so I found out what we need to do in order to activate the wireless LAN, which is the Wi-Fi. So let's just go ahead and click menu, system settings, uh, interface settings, network. And you're gonna scroll all the way down to LAN type. And on LAN type, you're gonna switch it over to wireless LAN. That means Wi-Fi. And now our Wi-Fi is, auto is officially activated. So now let's go back, back into interface settings, wireless LAN, and then easy setup. Let's do it once again. Let's hit the push button method. And then let's go to the router and hit the button once more. Ooh. All right, start. Searching for an access point. Access point has been found. Connecting to wireless LAN, please wait. Connection successful, or succeeded. That's it, now it's on Wi-Fi. And back to the computer. So let's go ahead and add the new printer. We already connected it to Wi-Fi. Add printer. Yes. I don't know what it's installing now, but it's installing something. Oh, it's, again, the print driver. Printer port or LAN. Then we're going to search for the printers by specified IP address. And then we're going to click, and then we're going to click next. Click next. Now let's go ahead and get the IP address. Menu. Menu again. System settings. Interface settings. Network. Machine IPv4 address. All right, so we're going to click on there, and then we're going to click IP add. And then that's our IP address, 10.0.0.3. 10.0.0.3. Then .0 click OK. And it found it. Sawgrass SG1000. Set it as a default printer. Yep, let's set it as a default printer. And then continue. Click set now. This little window is going to pop up. I don't think we have to mess with any of this right now, so let's just go ahead and click OK. And finish. Alright, now we just have to restart the computer, as always. Oh, you know what? There's actually a firmware update for the Sawgrass. Let's go ahead and update that. Click Yes. We have to restart our computer, but, but let's do that after the firmware update. So let's go ahead and update now. And that's it. So it can take up to 10 minutes depending on your internet connection and how fast you can download it, plus the installation time on the printer itself. So let's wait. Okay, so it shows on the screen 100% done, but on the printer... Oh wait, it shows ready already. On the printer it said, please wait. On the screen it can say that it's completely done, but if on the printer it says, please wait, don't do anything. Just wait. So now that this is at 100% and the printer is at ready state, let's go ahead and click finish. And let's go ahead and do that restart now. I'm going to be using 11 by 17 for this print. So let's figure out how this opens up. All right, so those little clips on the side, we have to push out. So that one and that one. No, not that way. Oh, all right, push them in. Oh, there we go. Now we can open it. Okay. So once I get all the way to the outside, I guess just clip, clip, clip them back. And there we go. 11 by 17. For this, I am going to be using my own brand of paper. I have Neko Prince sublimation paper. If you're interested in checking this out, make sure to check out necoprince.com. This is an 11 by 17 sheet. The back is pink, the front is white. I'm pretty sure we have to put this face down. that in. Let's take that out. Is this money more? Oh, that comes out to cover the paper. Let's try a print. I'm going to be printing this retro Pokemon shirt. 
I already have here Sawgrass Print Manager. Alright, so let's do that. I guess let's switch to print settings. Well, there we go. 2 11 by 17, 300 DPI, 600. 600 is too much. Most prints will be at either 72 or 300. So let's just leave this at 300. And this will definitely use a lot more ink and also take a lot longer. Click OK. I'm going to keep it at Printer Manager's Colors because I'm going to let the Sawgrass do its thing. Let's print. Let's see what happens. So Sawgrass Print Manager actually just popped up after I hit print. And... Oh, look at that. It's giving me what substrate I want to print on. Polyester, high quality paper. I'm going to keep it at text print R. Source tray 1. I don't need to mirror it because the image is already mirrored. Print. So this is what the image looks once it's printed from the sawgrass. Again, I used my own paper, the Menko Prints paper, and the image actually looks a lot more vivid than it did when I printed it using the Epson. All right, let's press it, let's see how it comes out. Please excuse the mess. I have had a lot of work to do and no time, so it's kind of, it gets messy, as a lot of you crafters would know. So I have a test shirt because I just wanna see how it comes out. This is actually a shirt that I pressed previously with the Epson on the other side. It did not come out right. It had pizza wheels and it had splashes of colors in different places. I'll show you after we press this one. That's actually one of the reasons why I decided to switch over to the Sawgrass because I was just getting too many problems with the converted Epson workforce. Since this is just a test, I'm just going to lay that down. I really don't care about placement. I'm going to do 400 degrees for 45 seconds. That's the paper. This was printed with my converted Epson workforce 7720. I was using Inkx Pro. You see the colors are pretty vibrant. They're good. They're nice, but after some time, as you can tell, started getting those little pizza wheels right there, those little dots, and then you see those splashes of green ink. And you got that over there, just a bunch of random stuff, and then the pizza wheels kept getting worse over time. And this is the print from the Sawgrass. The colors are very good, the red is perfect. The blues, the yellows, all the shadows, it, it looks really good. I am I really like it. No pizza wheels, obviously, everything's perfect. So that was the installation of the Sawgrass SG-1000. As you can see, it was very easy to set up. The software was super easy to install, it was very quick. And all in all, it took me, I would say, less than an hour to have everything unboxed, set up, and testing out my first print. If you want to get your hands on one of these Sawgrass printers, make sure to check out the link below for Heat Transfer Warehouse. Quick disclaimer, that is an affiliate link, so if you click on it, I will get a small percentage from your purchase. That being said, you don't have to buy from there. You can buy from anywhere you want. I buy from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I've been doing business with them for a while, and they have great customer service. They have never failed me. All in all, after my first print, first impressions on the printer are my first print right off the bat was perfect. The colors were spot on, very easy to set up, very quick, and overall, a great bang for my buck. Make sure to stay tuned because in a few months I will be doing a follow-up review on this. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Also hit that little bell notification so you don't miss out on anything in the future. Especially that internet unboxing. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you all next time.